We have the privilege of talking today with Professor Stanley Whittingham, who is considered one of the founding fathers of lithium ion battery technology. He invented the first rechargeable lithium ion battery and patented that back in 1977. And of course, was awarded the 2019 Nobel Prize in Chemistry. Now, Professor, as I said, an honor to talk with you today. You've been associated with Magnus Energy Technologies uh, as a non-executive director for several years now. And of course, Magnus has a partnership with green tech company C4V, um, and together they are developing IM3NY, which is a battery cell gigafactory in New York State. Uh, where battery production will soon commence. Now, given your history in the lithium ion battery industry, what first attracted you to Magnus, their technology, and the IM3 NY battery uh, plant project? Well, I was introduced to Magnus through um, C4V. Magnus was then a, predominantly a mining company. They had interest in the battery business. They had this graphite mine in Africa that was would give it better, cleaner graphite than available from elsewhere, and maybe enable that anode graphite to avoid having to go through the Chinese cleaning process. So we could use it directly, say, in the US, Europe, and Australia. So the, there's a number of incentives. A new company entering the business, it was exciting times. And I was intrigued. So I've been on the board for five years now. Now, of course, uh, you will be retiring from the, the board of Magnus at the end of the year. And the market here will, of course, speculate that your retirement is a result of uh, cons some consistently poor press here in Australia in regards to Magnus. Um, can you put into context the reasons for your retirement? Sure. So I joined the board about five years ago, and I agreed to stay on the board until we got the money invested for the New York battery plant. In addition, we just won a half million dollar award from the US government to put in a proposal for up to $100 million to build a battery ecosystem in New York State around where um, IM3 New York is being built. So I need to put my, all my energies into that effort. And I'm sure that effort, if we're successful, will help IM3 New York and therefore Magnus as well. But I can't stay on the Magnus board. I would have a conflict of interest at that point. Now, Professor, I suppose some investors don't realise, or what they don't realise, is that the US relies heavily on importing battery chain uh, components from offshore, particularly China. And ultimately, right now, the US is vulnerable to supply chain disruptions. Can you talk to the role US government funding will have in establishing a US EV battery chain? And will you have a role in this regard moving forward? So I think we learned through COVID that you can't have a single source supplier for anything. And we obviously, I said, learned from the um, experience of the last two years. But a similar situation is the case in the batteries. Most of the battery materials come from Asia and of those predominantly from China. So we know the US has to develop its own supply chain. The government has recognized that. And I think the US will work closely with Canada where there's lots of the minerals available. So they put a number of consortia together to build a supply chain, start building manufacturing capabilities and investing in gigafactories. So the, the Department of Con Commerce is, has this proposal out now which we're trying to get some money in to actually build some of that infrastructure right here in New York. And they're gonna build a number of these capabilities throughout the United States. So I think the government has recognized they've got to invest. If the auto industry goes totally electric, we can't give away that industry to Asia. Even though the agents may operate some of these facilities, the supply chain and security has to be within North America. Now, Professor, big picture, we're in the middle of what is known as a clean energy re uh, revolution, uh, where global EV uh, supply and demand is expected to grow by 10 times in 2030 or by 2030, and up to 30 times growth by 2040. Given your expertise, kind of, what are your insights into how this industry will look 
like in the uh, US in particular over the next decade or so? I, we're going to see dramatic changes, not only for electrification of transport, but clearly the US and other countries are going to um, clean energy, solar, wind, and all of that needs storage. Also with um, all these fires we're getting in the West, the hurricanes, we need greater resilience of the grid. And storage, particularly using battery, is the answer to that. So I think everybody recognizes that New York State has mandates, California has mandates. So this industry is going to grow tremendously in the next decade. 